Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Wednesday Q&A with us. You guessed it, guys. You guessed it. The British first. I'm crying, almost thinking about it. I'm Mr. Park in this guy's engine. What's up? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you cheer up a guy who is a little bit depressed. Subscribe down below, like down below, and comment down below. And make sure you contact us in the links in the description box below. Yeah, and also you can send us questions as well. If you would prefer to send us questions via comment, do so. If you prefer to send us com comments and stuff like that, then please do through YouTube inbox and stuff like that. Questions, all questions are good here on the British Fish Q&As. We've seen we've answered many around questions. And there is one more thing I encourage you to send us. If you're not, if you haven't done it already, please, 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 if you have a webcam, record yourself doing the What's Done! It's going to be a special compilation video that we're going to be doing on the intro, and if we get that many, and also our outro on the Elimination Chamber review, which will be the day of NJ's birthday, so that should be pretty cool. So send in your WhatsApp videos, we've already got a couple going, and it's looking really good so far, and I'm really buzzed for this. So anyway, let's get let's go into this Q&A, NJ. I don't want this to go more than 20 minutes again, like it keeps doing. Q&A 86. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to do some Royal Rumble questions first, as Royal Rumble is this Sunday. Class and Joe Lopez said, British Fish, in your opinion, who are your top uh, top three worst Royal Rumble winners? Ooh, okay, uh, here Vince, we go. Vince McMahon? Any that start finishes with John Cena. He should never win the Rumble, that little jackass. So 2008 then, that was a bad Rumble for you. Oh, boy. What was. about when it was the joint winners, when you had Brett and uh, when you had Brett and Lex Luger? That was stupid. First time for everything in the WWE. I guess so. What about when you had Big John Studd winning it? Or even Hacksaw winning it and never doing oh! it? I don't know. We don't really. I don't know. It's just a funny one. Uh, RGP Rich Porter. What's your favourite match at the Royal Rumble other than the Rumble? I think we both agree on this one, don't we? Bring out the blood. Bring out the sledgehammer. Bring out the barbed wire. It's none other than the Cactus Jack versus the Game Triple H. Bang bang! Yeah, what a great match that was. Rubber the man. Rubber the man. Who do you think will be making a surprise return during the Royal Rumble? The, with the rumours that they're going to be bringing back mid-carders, you may see an MVP, you may see a Shelton Benjamin, you may see some old people like, you know, the New Age Outlaws, or maybe a Kevin Nash or something like that. Oh, no, like but, um, you know, any that's the thing, they're surprised, they don't really know. If WWE scrap the whole, oh, he needs to improve on Mike, who never make it to the main event, but John Morrison! <laughs> yeah, bring about John Morrison, that'd be pretty cool. AJ Warrior. If you both entered the Royal Rumble with OTRS, Anything Goes Show, WWE, Nature Girl 30, Donald Trump, Justin Bieber, Heath Slater, Ashley Cole, and Wrestling Jesus, who would win? Well, I have a pretty good idea who wouldn't win. It would definitely be Justin Bieber who would not win this Rumble because I think Enjo would be soon kicking him in the nuts, depriving, what many, nuts? Teenage, depriving many teenage girls of screaming at him. The ones who would win, obviously, because everyone you've listed there support us and help make sure we win. If we're in the ring, the finalists are with Off The Rope Show, they'd happily eliminate themselves for us. End of. Next. A bit like Drew Carey did. Um, oh, yes. Who would, you, <laughs> who would you have preferred in the GM role, uh, Paul Heyman or Vicky Guerrero? Um, I think Paul Heyman would have been a good one for me. The whole contract signing thing that we mentioned, straight away I saw the fact that Triple H did not read the contract, he just signed at that time when Brock Lesnar came and Brock Lesnar won at SummerSlam. I thought you could have had Heyman as the champion or uh, the owner, sorry, instead of Triple H for a period of time. Imagine if uh, he did become the champion, that would be a moment to really save, yeah. Um, Paul Heyman, the WWE champion, would Vince do it? I don't think he would. Um, but definitely, Heyman would be a better GM than Vicky Guerrero. Right? Excuse me! I think that says it all. What would you. Would you like to see Rock versus CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania? Too much of a clusterfuck there. As really? much as I do agree that triple threaty matches do work, they, are, they do make great matches. When you've got Rock and Austin who are no longer a really part of the roster, they deserve their own separate match now. So Rock's doing one thing as Austin's doing another. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Be a bit of a clusterfuck there. Will Rest Wall Undertaker ever make it to 25 and 0? Um. You never know. What is he on twenty and zero now? I think to be honest, he's he, yeah, the fact he's only here at WrestleMania. They could make him go into mm. five more years, but I think logically, for the sake of Undertaker, 
maybe she just helped the final few. Yeah, they shouldn't really make it to get into a point where if he goes in the ring, he might be possibly killing himself, just even if it is once a year. So why, oh yeah, you're drinking out of my mug, aren't you, with my little face on it. Um, it's not really my face, it's just someone drawing and a little rhyme on the back. Um, I don't know when I got that, probably my 18th birthday. We're going a bit off track here. Yes. Anything goes, show WWE. Hello! Great, <laughs> the American version of us. Any, rate these WrestleMania matches from best to worst. Um, Giant Gonzalez versus Undertaker. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. Undertaker versus Big Show and A-Train. John Cena versus Miz at WrestleMania 27. Undertaker versus Big Boss Man WrestleMania 15. Eight-man tag match at WrestleMania 27. Michael Cole versus Lawler at WrestleMania 27. And Stone Cold versus Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18. Best to worst. So the best, I'm leaning a bit uh, towards... John Cena and Miz weren't a bad match. Was, I think it was the finish that really... Clampered or something. I think the finish was all right. It's just that the match itself was very anticlimactic. They're all bad. I, I don't even want to rate these from best to worst because they're all bad. Well, the worst I'm going to say is going to be Michael and Joe Lawler. The commentators oh. should not wrestle. I guess the best would be Stone Cold versus Scott Hall, but uh, Ooh, that's Scott still not that Cuckoo. good, really. Latte Carter, yeah. What's the worst book you have ever read? Cockroach. <laughs> Any book you had to read during school, you had to read. So, yes. <laughs> I hated history. So, history books are always shit for Back me. Back in 1982, Dad. Yeah. Was that before you were born, NJ? A <laughs> if Rock would return for a full year, what would you have him do? Like, wrestle or commentary or referee or something else? Oh, wrestle. Have him come back to a full year back as The Rock again. That'd be awesome. As much as Rock and commentary would bring so much gold to it, to all his promos and disses, I think when you think of The Rock, you think of wrestling. So, for him to come back full year, no movies, no time out, a full year wrestling. It'd be great as a Rock fan that I am to see him back for a full year. Just be a fan again. Which debut was worse? Gobbledy Gooker or The Shockman? Whoa! They're both terrible. I know exactly why you're doing this because Off the Road Show did a dual debate which was better, Gobbledy Gooker or Shockmaster's debut. They were both terrible. Shockmaster, there we go. Metal Ruler, for, at least that had a funny. Ooh. I can still both funny in a certain way, but uh, yeah. Metal, but your your helmet didn't fall off in the process, NJ. Well, no, Unless you're wearing a helmet that I didn't, haven't known about since we've been friends, since oh. like all our lives. Metal Ruler 45, do you think that TNA should be more violent and push the limits on what they do? Yes, I think they're really for sure. No. No, I mean, th th that would basically be them just doing ECW, and that only, let's face it, more violent, pushing the limits kind of stuff, only appeals to a certain niche of fans. So TNA are right in what they're doing. They're doing some good stuff to try and captivate wrestling fans such as ourselves and casual audiences as well. I mean, they're fine as they are. They don't need to push the limits too much. I think at least one pay-per-view pay -per a year, and it's about like hardcore just when we mm. had that, they could go full out, go hardcore, go bloody, do this, do that. But without that pay-per-view, I think they shouldn't have to feel the need to. They do have the ECW show, though, which might have some alcohol stuff in it. I don't know. We don't really know how it's going to work out, do we? But yeah. Cold Rain 861. When do you think Styles will face Aries and Sunny be for the title? That is a match that has to happen at some point down the line. I don't even really think it needs to be for the title, to be honest with you. Especially I... with AJ's new character development. Well, with Jeff Hardy's title reign being a bit eh, I think giving it to Aries and then having Aries change it with AJ would be a real good match. Better than, let's say, AJ Hill versus Jeff Hardy. I'd prefer seeing Aries and AJ. Especially if AJ comes back from that the redemption story on and gets off Aries or something. That would be pretty cool. Grinny24. Do you think they should combine the WWE title and World Heavyweight maybe at WrestleMania? Then they can combine Raw and SmackDown. Do you think this should make the show better? It would definitely make the show better. But I'm not sure WWE would want to do it because of the touring ability to take one brand here, one brand there, and they always want a top belt to support the brands that they have. So I've always been about combining the mid cards, but the world heavyweights, the fact that we get repeated world heavyweight title match feuds, I think if you combine them both, you have a more of a mixture. Raw main eventers, SmackDown main eventers, bang, you've got it. So if it was more like that, then yes, but I'd, I'd start with the mid card. Yeah, especially with the lack of roster, it would just help if they had so much on one show they can carry storylines onto another show. You know, it might help. Dan Haynes. As the apparent face of TNA and being out of the title scene for 12 months, where is AJ Styles going? He hasn't done much within the last 12 months. They aren't using him to his best. Can you see him WWE bound in the future? Um, they are doing something really right now. They are they are in the process of developing his character, which in my opinion was needed because his character was getting a little bit stale, even though I still liked AJ Styles. But... He's not going to go to WWE, no way, I don't see it. 
the way I see it is the fact that the best thing you could do, the fact that Tino went through that stupid thing, not allowing AJ to go for the belt for a full year, mm. great idea. I think the best thing to do is make him go up against someone else that is not doing what he should be. Who could that be? James Bloody Storm. Have them two face each other because they're both doing nothing right now. <laughs> Instead of bringing AJ go back go against Daniels, go against Storm. View. Sorry about your damn luck. Gold standard triple zero. Gold what if standard. Cody Rhodes had won Money in the Bank contract in Money in the Bank 2012 instead of Dolph Ziggler? Do you think Ziggler would have suffered? I do. I think without that Money in the Bank briefcase, I don't think WWE would have done much of Dolph Ziggler, to be honest with you. I really don't. I personally think that with Ziggler, he may not be push towards the title, but I think other things would have came up because SmackDown would eventually have to realise they can't have Sheamus versus Big Show for a full bloody year and Dario's not working. So I think Ziggler would have been put somewhere, but maybe not in the place he's at now. So thanks to the briefcase, he is able to go that way. I mean, you just look at it in the sense that Ziggler, when he didn't have the briefcase, they never really did much of him. He wasn't in a feud consistently, but now he's got the money in the band briefcase. He's always in some kind of feud, whether it be John Cena, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, etc. So I think the money in the band briefcase, without that, he wouldn't have been in this spot. No way at all. Um, Latte Carter. Do you all watch The Rock speech at Hall of Fame 2008 and what are your thoughts on it? Was that the one where he dissed John Cena? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> about, you know, time to a chair, forcing him to watch The Marine. Mm -hmm. And then he has like, San, uh, Santino Morella's <laughs> It was all funny. I really loved this, but I think you're talking more about not the comedy side, but maybe the hint of mm. his thing against John Cena for the future, one more match and that stuff. I think it was good for the comedy and it started to get the bad interaction the thought of him going against Cena. Who was the most colourful, Ultimate Warrior or Macho Man? Um, I'd definitely say Macho Man. Uh, Ultimate Warrior was a real unique character and colourful in his own crazy way, but Macho Man... You know, you look at the mic skills, you look at the character, you look at the presentation, you look at his charisma. Definitely the most colourful out of those two characters. Mm -hmm. And you would agree. Mm -hmm. Which was better, Rock vs Triple H at SummerSlam 98 or Rock vs Brock at SummerSlam 02? Both great matches, in my opinion. Um, Rock and Triple H, you really saw that they were going both going to be stars at some point. Whereas Rock and Brock, you saw that Brock was going to be a massive star for WWE. They were both very good matches. I'd give the edge to Rock and Triple H, though. I really think they worked a very good semi-main event match. I think Lati Carr's got a brilliant question here mm -hmm. because with the Rock and Triple H, yes, I'm a Triple H fan. I really love this. It's very entertaining. If I look at Rock and Brock, the way they had it was, yes, some people complain about the way that Brock was brought up, but the way this match went down, it had a great SummerSlam, great moment, did great for Brock Lesnar, and this actually made Rock doing so great for Brock. Awesome. And who said that we never agree? And who said no? Who said that we always agree? Sorry. I don't know, Dan. No, anyway, let's just move on from that. Mega Roy Green, what do you think of, uh, what do you think of WWE having NXT superstars on the main roster and NXT? So, like a Biggie Langston, if he's on NXT but also on WWE TV. How do you feel about that? Well, if they're still progressing themselves up or if the WWE on the main roster are not giving them matches, I still think they should be doing something elsewhere, building them up, giving them matches. As long as they're not fighting for the championship on the opposite show than they're on, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of NXT is to build these guys up and get them used to an audience and used to cutting promos and wrestling matches. So if they need to stay in NXT for a little bit, then let them do that. I understand exactly what you're saying now about, you know, the whole being on two shows like Biggie Langston was, Seth Rollins was, etc. The Phelps Network. What do you think about Barrett versus Triple H? That would be a pretty good feud, don't you think? I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again and again because I personally, when I look at Wade Barrett, from early days of Nexus, I thought if they continued this way, you could have Wade Barrett as a ex Triple H Hill kind of character, like he's the centre of attention, the title is his. They've really blown it now, but I'm just saying I could see a way about going that way. So to put them against each other, I have no problem with it. I think the WWE should have aimed that way eventually, and that match would have been good for me. And then we're back to agreeing again, NJ. Who would you root for, though? That's an important. I think that's a bigger question. Who would you root for, uh, Triple H and Barrett? Eventually, I'm going to have to find someone to support in the now era because mm -hmm. Triple H is going to step over and take over Vince. So I need someone that's now. I want to say Barrett, but the WWE are not treating him right. So for this match, yes, I wouldn't mind who wins, but I want Barrett to be the next step up. And what do you think would have happened to CM Punk at the peak of his time as a face if John Cena fell from his place at the top of the mountain? Um... 
Do you really think that if John Cena, well, first of all, that wouldn't happen, but let's say it did and John Cena was just a jobber, which was like your dream come true. <laughs> Wet dream come true, MJ. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so what would, do you really think they would have pushed CM Punk that far? Because I, I don't think they would have done. But the question is, who else would they have pushed? John Cena falling off a mountain is possible. Um, anyway, with this certain question, I think if you look at the other wrestlers, they're trying to push Sheamus to be the next top base. But I think with CM Punk having the mic work, the good in-ring skills, the band base quicker than Sheamus had it, I think CM Punk would have been one of the ones to look at first. Howard the man, as MJ gets over from his I've got to change his trousers. <laughs> what, for the next Q&A? Yeah. I don't know, I don't see the trousers anyway in the Q&A. Who, you, <laughs> who will get a push in 2013? Funkasaurus, Cesaro, Tensai, Damian Sandow, or Ryback? Um, definitely... Antonio Cesaro, Sandow and Ryback, but the biggest push will definitely be Ryback. Well, let me quickly go through. Bonksaurus failed. Yep. And Antonio Cesaro, I think WWE sees something in him. Mm. They need to get the fans behind before it happens. Tensai failed. Sandow, I think, is at a point where if he continues to tag, once the tag team breaks up, he'll be in a big run. Ryback, I think, um, I don't agree with it, but it's going to be Ryback because of Vince wanting there to be another star to chase Cena. Which we currently need right now, babyface stars. If they had a money in the bank in the 1980s, who would you pick to carry the briefcase? Oh, only one man could be good for this. Ray on Ramon! He would have been good. But awesome. He but he wouldn't have been great. Ooh. The million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. How could you argue with that? That would be a great money in the bank briefcase holder. Scott Hall, a million dollar man. Exactly. Ted DiBiase and Scott Hall. Uh, Scott tag team. Hall as a tag team would be awesome. Raise uh, millions. Montel Smith, do you believe the best talk? Who do you believe the best talk in WWE is apart from The Rock? I personally believe that it is John Cena. Whereas wrestling ability is questionable, his ability to connect with fans is very good. I do agree that John Cena is good on the mic. He does he does portray his message quite well. As as long as as many, as much as people may disagree with his message, and just like John Cena does, he comes up with really good jokes. Um, I think the next person you should be looking at oh, is... That's funny. I no, I mean, you're doing what John Cena just made there. Oh, right, yeah. uh, I think it's CM Punk, because it's awesome on mic. Whenever Mike, he picks up a mic, you have to listen to him, just like Miz used to be. I think CM Punk is up there on that list. I yes. definitely like Sandow as a mic worker. He's really good. Just the way he delivers, delivers his promos is excellent. And Kane. Yeah, Kane's dark yeah, primos. Yeah, Kane's mm. right. Yeah, I guess Kane's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put him in like the top dark ten, like top maybe top half. Yeah. yeah. Weird guy 7 i <laughs> Do you think WWE will take notice if Impact consistently got higher ratings than SmackDown for a couple of months okay. and will try and improve the product? And do you guys think Impact will eventually get higher ratings than SmackDown? I certainly think it's possible. Well, if Impact was getting higher ratings than SmackDown, they would definitely be worried. They would definitely have to do something, much like they did in the 90s against WCW. I mean, they, they would have to. I mean, that's their competition, essentially, if that happens. Every year or so, Hogan, Sting, Dixie is going to come up with these new ideas to get their show out there, like they're doing these last two years. I think eventually they have the chance to chase SmackDown. Not just yet, but I think they do have the chance once they click to what idea actually works. And do you think the Impact will get higher ratings than SmackDown? No. no, not for another couple of years. They really need to improve their products a lot if they were going to get the ratings higher than SmackDown. They're currently like 1.8 to 2.2 with The Rock on there. So, um, anything goes show WWE. Where do you see Biggie Langston, in The Shield and Brad Maddox in the next couple of years? Um, five guys there. I think Brad Maddox, not sure where he'll go, but The Shield and Biggie Langston are definitely going to be going somewhere for the WWE. Whether, whether Biggie Langston has got the physique that you know, that it's like the Shield have got three guys in there that have that brings different things to the table that I think will eventually get some kind of push over mid card or main event. So Biggie Lights and the Shield, I think, have a big future for WWE. Brad Maddox, we don't know too much about him yet. Langston's not really wrestled within the WWE yet, so until that happens, I can't make a full judgment. The Shield, as long as the WWE continue their booking and then eventually pair two of them off, mm. one of them off to the main event, whatever they're gonna do. They could do well. And as off the rope shows say, the Maddox has the Maddox. So, yes, he's going to be the leader of the Shield, but I think he's not going to make it as high as the others. Human! Beef mode, eh? Beef mode for the win, I guess. Uh, we do watch OTRS, guys, even though, yeah, we, uh, we do watch OTRS. I'm just saying. Do do. Anyway, that's the end of another Q&A, ending on an OTRS pun there. That's the first time we've ever done that on a Q&A. Um, 
keeping in your questions and everything and all that kind of bollocks in the comments section below and everything that we put in the description box for you to look at. Um, I'm not going to tell you any more than that. I'm just going to leave you to enter. And since since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves as you watched. Until next time, YouTubers, thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>